Welcome to youth, by the way. I'm Pastor Marco. <laughs> pastor Marco Maya. I'm an associate pastor here. And uh, there's a verse that says, pray without ceasing. You ever heard that one? Pray without ceasing? Well, it makes you wonder, okay, how do you pray without stopping? Right? It's like, it's something that I've thought of before. It's like, okay, I want, I like praying, but how do you do it constantly when you have other things to do? And uh, I, I heard Oral, I, I saw Oral Roberts write in, the, in a book called A Prayer Cover Over Your Life, I think is uh, where I saw it. And Oral Roberts was explaining that praying without ceasing means that you have a constant awareness of God in your life, right? So you do, you should pray. You should have times when you pray and talk to God and verbally pray out of your mouth, right? Not just in your head. Um, you should pray out of your mouth. But, you know, when we, the way we should live our life is kind of like the way Tony said, it. like we go through our life always aware of Jesus Christ in our life. Oh, you know, talking to him, wanting to know what he wants us to do today. And when you walk in the light, you will walk in fellowship with your, your brothers and sisters in Christ, okay? And the blood of Jesus Christ will cleanse you of all sin. That's what 1 John 1, 7 says. So it's important to stay connected to the, the vine, the vine, all right? So this is what I'm going to show you here. So being led by the Spirit today. Do you want them to grab some Bibles? Um, it, it may be hard to keep up with me. Okay. Um, I don't want to have you like try to turn the pages and then to try to get to where I'm going, and then I change by the time you get there, I get to another verse. <laughs> that would not be good. Um, so it's all right, just you can just listen. John chapter 15, it says, Uh, I am the true vine. Just this is Jesus talking. He said, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. And in verse 4, abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. So you have to see yourself as a branch connected to Christ who's the vine or the trunk of the tree, you could say, or like the... Um, the stem, okay, where you get all the nutrients from. So when you stay connected to Christ, then his power and his grace will flow through your life to where you can produce fruit. Because, you know, one of the great commandments of God, it was the first commandment he gave man, was bear fruit and multiply, right? So your life, you're young, you have a bright future ahead of you, a lot of things that God wants you to do. And so one of the great desires in our lives is to bear fruit for God, right? So you don't want your life to be meaningless, right? You don't want your life to be insignificant. You know, I don't think, I, I would say very few people would ever want to be, have a mediocre life. Am I right? You want to have something, you want to do something significant with your life. And so Jesus is telling you the secret is you have to, when you stick to him and you stay connected to Jesus, You'll just produce fruit automatically just by being with him. And then with being without Christ is how you get disconnected. Just like a branch that gets cut off of a tree, it dies. It withers. It doesn't have the life, the life force going through it. Um, so I, I feel to call this message today how to receive God's blessing. How do you receive his blessing? Because not everyone's blessed. Right? I mean, you, if you just look out through the world, you can tell some people aren't blessed. Some people are cursed. Uh, some people are blessed. So then what? how do you make sure that you're one of the people that are blessed by God? Right? Because when, you, when you're blessed, everything works for you. Right? You have your – when God's will, in 3 John 2, it says, I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health. Just as your soul prospers. That's the Apostle John spoke that or wrote that by the um, unction of the Holy Spirit, by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. He wrote that, and, and that's God's will for your life. So, what does that mean? It means He wants you to be rich, not just spiritually. Some people think that just means spiritually. No, it means 
physically rich, materially, financially rich, and be in health, which means you have good health in your body, where you're healthy and your your physical body, your mind's healthy, or, and, and and just as your soul prospers, so your 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 mind, your will, and emotions, your your that part of your mind is healthy. Okay, you're spiritually healthy, right? So that's God's will. So so then, how do we receive those blessings, right? And uh, there is a verse that I want to share with you to prove what I'm trying to tell you. Because some people think, you know, they're not sure if God really wants to bless them materially, financially, and, and stuff like that. In uh, Job chapter 36, verse 11, it says, if they obey and serve him, talking about God, if they obey and serve God, then they shall uh, spend their days in prosperity and in their years in pleasures. So that's how you can, one of the guarantees in life is if you give your life to serve Jesus and whatever he tells you to do, then one of the, or the, some of the rewards are he will bless you with prosperity, which is financial prosperity, but also in your family, you know, you, you don't lack any good thing, and also with pleasure so that you actually enjoy your life, that it's actually satisfying, it's actually fulfilling, Okay. And uh, so God wants you to live that kind of life. Now, Psalm 1, 1, I want to start there, is that one of the things that's going to help you to receive the blessing is, is going to, you can see it in Psalm 1, verse 1, it says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So blessed, it says blessed is the man, right, who does what? Who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. So what does that mean? It means that a person who doesn't take the advice of sinners is blessed, okay, of ungodly people. So uh, if you take the advice of someone who's, living a life against Christ, against God's commandments, then you're not going to be blessed. That's what it's saying. Because you have to be careful about who you listen to, because who you listen to is going to affect you. It's going to influence you. And it's just it's just one of those things that just happens no matter what. Like so there, cuz there's some people that feel like it doesn't matter what they listen to or what they hear or what they see. They think that it won't affect them at all. But we know that that's not true because of this, right? Uh, we also know that in um, Mark chapter 4, verse 24, it's, Jesus said, Take heed what you hear. Uh, I'm going to pull that up. Mark chapter 4, verse 24, it says, Take heed. Uh, then he said to them, take heed what you hear with the same measure you use, it will be measured to you, and to you who hear, more will be given. So you receive what you listen to. This is big, especially for young people. I felt like God wanted me to touch on this because when I was a teenager, okay, I could tell we would all be influenced by what we listened to, by the music we listened to, by the movies we watch, okay? And you can easily see it if you look at your friends in high school or people that you know, right, in high school or wherever you're at. You can tell that they live their lives similarly to the people they listen to or they tr at least try to, right? Because, like, if you, if you have rappers that talk about a certain lifestyle, okay, um, people that listen to them a lot Without even trying, they're going to start acting like that person or talking like that person or trying to do what that person does. So your destiny actually has a lot to do with who you decide to listen to, right? So people can choose whoever they want to listen to. You have free will to choose whoever. But you have to know that according to God's word, that based on who you listen to will determine whether you're blessed or not. This is a big thing. Um, young people, youth, a lot of times uh, young people listen to their friends a lot. 
It's a big thing, you know, listening to your friends. I was like big like that. I was like that when I was young, although I wasn't saved until uh, 2017 when I was about 22 years old, okay? Um, but y'all have the privilege to know Christ, bef you know, earlier than that. But I can tell you from personal experience that because I didn't listen to God or Jesus or anything like that, my life had a lot of issues, a lot of problems. And, you know, there was a lot of th bad things could have happened to me. You know, I could have I could have overdosed on drugs. Um, some people I grew up with. I, I specifically know certain people that aren't alive right now because they weren't as fortunate. Okay, they didn't survive some of the things they went through, okay, with drugs. And so I got saved, and so by the grace of God, I'm a preacher, okay? <laughs> but I didn't know that when I was young. I didn't know I was going to be a preacher. I was, I came from a place where I didn't believe in Jesus at all, at all, not even, I even like try to tell people he's not real. That's how, that's how against Christ I was. Um, but one day, I received Jesus and just by sitting in a service at a, and it was like a conference type thing. And I received Jesus and everything changed for me in one day. It wasn't like, you know, let me think about this, you know, kind of get into it over time. It was like from one day I went from not believing anything in the Bible to believing like everything. I was wow. like, this is real. Wow. You know, Jesus wow. saved me. You know, my heart was like pumping hard when, when they were calling people to receive Christ. I was like, I had to go up there. I almost didn't go up there. I was like frozen. I was like, uh, and I looked over at my girlfriend who became my wife, Janet. And she was like, well, if we, you know, if we believe everything they're saying, why don't we just go up there and receive Christ? And I was like, that's true, you know. Um, so I just had to make that jump, you know, the leap of faith. But in the same way, you need to make a leap of faith and say, you know, Lord, I know that your word is true. You know, the flower fades, the grass withers, but the word of the Lord stands forever. You see, the, see the, the wisdom that I'm, gonna sh I'm sharing with you tonight is the type of wisdom that doesn't fade away. It's, it's not a wisdom that works for a while and fades away like a trend. A trend is something you try it out, it's cool for a little while, and then it goes away, and then you replace it with some other thing. But God's word has an amazing supernatural effect uh, and power to it because it never dies away. It never seems to be, it can't be conquered. It can't be replaced. It can't be changed. It's always the same. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when you stand on God's word and what he says, like blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, and you live by that, then you absolutely will have what it says regardless of what anyone else says because his word is supreme, you know. So what I'm saying is be careful about what you listen to because um, your blessing is going to come from that and your or lack of blessing will also come from not listening to the right people, right? If you listen to, let, let's go to Proverbs chapter 13. Um, or I'll go there. And maybe Tony will go there if she has the Bible. <laughs> um, Proverbs 13, verse 20. It says, He who walks with wise men will be wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Wow. So if you, if you walk with wise men, if you surround yourself and listen to people that are wise, then you will become wise yourself. Because uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so faith comes by hearing. You have to hear faith to have faith, to receive faith, and increase your faith in God. And, and, you, and the same thing happens for people that listen to doubt and unbelief, right? If you, sur if you surround yourself with mockers, with people that make fun of church, for example, and make fun of things and they think it's not a big deal, it's not, it doesn't matter, God doesn't matter, and you surround yourself with people like that, uh, you're going to end up becoming like them, and then you'll be destroyed, the Bible says. Because foolishness, uh, one of the examples of a fool is someone who says that God isn't real, right? Um, if someone doesn't believe God exists, that's a fool. 
because they, everyone knows deep inside that God does exist. That's what Romans 1 talks about. Um, but you can also, now, let me warn you, you can also find, okay, you can also s s surround yourself with Christians that are ungodly. Did you know that? There's people that say they believe in Jesus, but by their lifestyle, you can tell they don't really believe like they should, right? So, for example, someone that's, you know, con committing sexual immorality, right? Uh, if they don't repent, right, a real Christian is someone who, you know, if they make a mistake, they repent. So yeah. they'll, they'll realize that they messed up. And they're like, they, I can't do that anymore. That's bad. You know, I don't want to go to hell. Right? That's what a real Christian does. A real Christian's like, I'm not going to do that anymore. Uh, I'm sorry, Lord, I even ever did that. And then they change their ways and live holy, right? According to what God said, which is to not have sex before marriage. And that's big for youth because youth, you know, is widespread. Um, that's one example. Another example is, you know, people that you can tell they just lie to your face all the time. You know, or they, they're fake. You know, they, they say one thing to your face, but then they go do something else when they're not with you. And you're like, okay, that doesn't line up. What they're saying doesn't line up with their actions, right? That's, you know, people that habitually lie, that's, they're not living like a Christian. So you have to judge a tree by its fruits, right? Jesus said that. You judge a tree by its fruits, um, <laughs> you know. It, it kind of goes against this idea that, oh, you can't judge anybody. Yeah, but when it comes to, like, protecting your life, okay, and you want to be blessed, you want to, when you surround, when you choose the people you hang out with, or you choose the people that you want to spend time with, um, you have to be careful to judge the tree by its fruits. You have to see what are they producing in their life, right? What is their, what are the results of their actions? Are they... Are they are they successful with what they're doing? Is you know are they getting closer to God? You know are they involved with helping to build the church? Are they winning souls? Like are they witnessing to people about Jesus so that people can believe in Jesus too? You know are they praying for sick people to be healed? You know that's like those are good fruits of someone that's following Christ. It, it proves their faith. Because faith without works is dead, the Bible says. So when there's works that prove it, then you could be like, okay, this person is someone that I could, it, it'd be good for me to spend time with because it'll stir my faith up to do good works too. Good. You know, um, and you'll be blessed because when you walk with wise people, you're, you yourself become wise. And the, the Bible says that the, uh, the fruit, I think it's the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And those who uh, win souls are wise. Proverbs 11, verse 30. For the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. So according to God's word, someone who witnesses to people about Jesus is someone who's wise. So that's one of the, one of the ways you can tell. Okay, this person is actually wise, and I can surround myself with that person because they win souls for Jesus. Okay. Um, and so that's how you want to start looking at people in the way God does. Um, that doesn't mean that you can't love people, right, that are not living a godly life, right? You can help those people, right? You, you, if you see someone that's lost in the world and they're clearly in sin against God, they're, they're doing drugs, they're doing this, they're doing that, you can tell they're disobeying what God wants them to do. You can be the person that God uses to witness to them and say, you know, did, did you know God loves you and has a wonderful plan for your life? Um, you know, if you die right now, do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt you would make it to heaven? You know, that's how you witness to people so they can start thinking about Christ. They start thinking about eternal life, what happens after they die. And then that'll get them to realize the truth, okay? And... You can learn that, and I, I can help teach you that kind of stuff too. Like, how do you how do you tell people about Jesus? But um, that that's what you want to do. But you don't want to become a habitual person that habitually hangs out with people that are doing wrong things, that are uh, breaking the law constantly. You know, 
Because you could easily end up in jail if you spend time with the wrong people. I mean, I've seen it happen. With, I mean, let me tell you a crazy story, okay? Um, I, I've preached in jails before. Or in, in a, I've only preached in one jail before, I should say, a few times. In this, part, in this particular jail in, uh, in Pennsylvania, before I moved here. And um, there was a man, okay, who actually, because I was working with somebody that was helping me. He was the one that opened the door for me to get in and preach to the people in jail. Because he, uh, he had connections into the jail that allowed him that allowed him to come in, and I would come in as like a guest speaker to preach. And so the man that coordinated this stuff, he found a guy that got saved. Um, I believe he was from that jail or something, who, be, who was a Muslim who became a Christian. So it was an amazing testimony, right? And so he would have him uh, like do like a quick like testimony about well, how God changed his life and stuff like that, okay? Um, and it was awesome. It was awesome. Then I think it was a couple weeks later or a few weeks later, okay, after we, after we had an event, you know, we were preaching at the jail. The, the, the guy that used to be a Muslim, you know, he's talking and telling people about how God changed his life. Um, then a few weeks later, uh, I get a call. I think, it was, I think that's how it happened is that I got a call from, from the, the guy that coordinates the, the events. And he, he tells me that that man who used to be a Muslim just ended up stabbing two people to death and, had to, and went back to jail. Yeah, how did that happen? They, he went back to uh, some person's house to do crack, to smoke crack. Yeah, so he, he had a temptation that the devil used to get him back into the places he used to be. And when he got, he made the mistake of obeying the devil's temptation. And when he went there, once he was high on whatever he was doing, crack or whatever, he I lost, I think he like blacked out or he did. So, you know, I'm guessing a demon possessed him at some point and used him to murder those people. So, so then he goes back to jail and now, you know, I think there's like, there may be little to no chance he's ever gonna get out. So that's how someone who's a Christian Okay, who believes in Jesus can end up you being used by the devil because they didn't resist the temptation of the devil. So you have to be careful, right, about who you listen to, who you, uh, you know, you don't want to listen to the devil trying to tell you to do something you know is wrong because he's going to lead you down a bad path. And I gave you an example of what the devil wants to do to you. You know, just because you're young doesn't mean the devil's just going to be soft on you. The devil absolutely doesn't care at all that you're young. He'll treat you just as bad as a 50-year-old person. He doesn't care. Um, he just wants to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So we want to hold on to Jesus because not only is he our blessing, but he's also our protection from evil, all right? In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 18, it says, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever, amen. That's what the apostle Paul said. And actually the verse before that, he says, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me. And that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And then he says, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. You want to live your life with the mindset that you need God's help to constantly preserve you from evil. To make sure that you go from where you're at right now to getting to heaven, right, with Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Okay, that you, you want to make sure of that because if you can make sure of that and realize that heaven and hell are real places and Jesus is the only way to heaven, you want to follow him, okay? And as long as you follow him, then all the blessings are going to chase you down. 
Yeah, the Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard, but blessings will chase down the righteous. If you live a life righteously, right, clean, pure, you'll be the one to get all the blessings while all these other people get screwed. That's, that's actually how it works. You know, people think the other way. They, some people, the, the devil's deception is to make you think that your life's going to be easier if you just do it the devil's way. Right? For, uh, you know, for example, um, you know, uh, there's people that, <laughs> there's a lot of young people that want to make money, but they're so greedy for money and they don't know how else to make money that they resort to selling drugs. It's true. You know, they, you know, um, I know because I saw it firsthand myself. They all, they all want to, you know, sell weed or whatever to make a quick buck so they have money to go on vacation with their friends or whatever. But the thing is that when people start dabbling, right, in the devil's things, then the devil has the right to come into your life and destroy it. So there's a spiritual realm that you have to be aware of, right? So if you open doors to the devil, then the devil can come in, get you arrested, try to get you overdosed on it, try to change, you know, ruin your life, <laughs> You even get you in a wrong relationship with the wrong woman at an early age so that he can screw you over, right? So um, you want to avoid all that by knowing that God and doing it God's way, he designed, right, light. He designed the Bible is actually your blueprint of how to, um, you all right? Oh, okay. Yeah, the, the Bible is like a blueprint to um, show you how you can have the most successful life possible. And if you do everything that it says, then, then let's see let's see what let's see what happens here. Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight. So this Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight. Have y'all do you recognize this chapter? Has anyone read this chapter before? Yeah? No? Okay. So Deuteronomy chapter 28, this is God showing you what happens if you listen to him. Mm -hmm. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. And that's just the, the first couple of verses. Then, he, then it starts going into all the blessings too. So he sets you high above all the nations of the earth. He actually wants you to be so wealthy that you're affecting a nation. You know, that's big. Um, and he, he wants you to be so influential that you affect an entire nation. All right. Verse 3, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Wow. So he, he's saying blessed in the city, blessed in the country. Wherever you go, mm -hmm. you're going to be blessed. Mm -hmm. right? You'll have favor in your life. So if you're trying to get a job. You live the way God wants you to live. That he will just make the manager like you. And he won't even understand why he likes you. He just wants to hire you. He doesn't realize it's God making him like you. You, you just have this magnetized favor in your life where just things just go well for you. Okay? Um, these are supernatural blessings that will set you apart from everyone else. Um, then it says, blessed shall be the fruit of your body. That's talking about your children in the future. Whenever you have children, they'll be blessed because you obey God. Then it says the produce of your ground and the increase of your herds. The, the things that you do for a living, God's going to bless that. God's going to make you produce a lot. Whatever you're called to do, which is also another whole other topic, it's very important, what you're called to do, you'll be blessed in what you're called to do. You know, Once you graduate, obviously you're going to work somewhere, right? And you're going to start... A career, you're going to follow after your dreams, whatever it is, God will bless that, right, when you follow him and what he says. 
and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. You know, back in the day when, when this was written, they didn't have cars, obviously. Um, so people had animals as transportation too. And so you could actually interpret this as saying, blessed shall be your cars. The increase of your cars, the increase of your possessions that you have. These are all things that God actually wants for you. It's just that at that, that time they didn't have cars, so they didn't say cars. Blessed shall be your basket and your netting bowl. Blessed shall be when you come in and blessed shall be when you go out. So wherever you go, again, the Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. That's amazing. You know, there's going to be, when you live a life for God, you will be persecuted. So that means that there's people that are going to hate you because you love God. It's just, it happens to basically every Christian that follows after Jesus. And the, the, the guarantee from God is, whoever tries to come against you to stop you from doing what God says he's going to do, is they're going to make them fail. They won't have a way to stop you from doing what God says. And you'll be blessed, okay? And then uh, you have, the Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses, and in all to which you uh, set your hand, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God has given you. When it says bless you in your storehouses, in modern language, you could say he's blessing your checking account. He's going to bless you in your savings account. He's going to bless you in your wallet, right, storehouse. That's, you could, that's just like the old way of saying it. So, uh, the Lord will establish, establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you, if, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. So the condition is, it's not just automatic, okay? You, you do have to uh, do what he says, <laughs> and then you can get the blessing, right? Um, this isn't talking about you getting saved. It's different. These are rewards that you get for obeying him. So to get saved, to make sure you're right with God and that you know you're going to heaven, okay, when you die, that just comes from believing in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because he paid the price for all the sins you've committed. Because if you don't have Jesus pay for that, pray for your sins, then you'll have to pay for it, which is hell. So you, when you receive Jesus, then you know for sure you're going to heaven. And then what this is talking about is when you obey him in your life, Okay, you can have certain rewards that God's going to give you. Okay, um, and there is a danger that if you disobey God after you believe in Jesus, yes, there is a danger that at some point you could reach a limit of God's mercy. But you don't want to, you know, there's no point trying to find out what that limit is. If you simply just follow God, you won't have to worry about that. Um, so then it says. Then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. Wow. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, and in the, in the fruit of your body, in the increase of your livestock, and in the produce of your ground, in the land of which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. So following God's ways, you'll actually come into possession of land. All right. So some people feel like there's that's impossible. You know that the only way you could do that is if you get a loan from a bank. That's what how most people think, because um, they don't their their mind hasn't accepted the, the the vast resources that God can give you. But you have to believe it in order to receive it. You know if you don't believe it, you can't get it. But if you really believe it and you hold on to what the Word is saying in Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight which I recommend you study on your own, You will, God will lead you to it. It may not be instantaneous. Okay, most people, it's not instantaneous for most people anyway. But he will lead you to these blessings as you pursue and continue following Jesus. And he's wanting you to, why is he doing this? Why does God want to do all this stuff? Because he loves you. That's why he wants to do this, right? He's not, 
you don't want to you, you want to fall in love with God and his character that he's a good God that he's a good father that really wants to take care of you that's that's the message you, you want to receive in your heart and and that's what makes you want to spend time with him and realize how how good he is is all these amazing things that he does and then in verse 12 it says the Lord will open to you his good treasure the heavens to give the rain to your land in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. That's an interesting. Now, there, there's something that I feel God wants me to say is that the reason why you want to do a good job whenever you have a job, okay, is that uh, God, you know, God is watching what you're doing. He's watching to see if you're doing something right or if you're doing it the wrong way, right? So there's that's why some people that don't know that, you'll see if you work with them, you'll notice why are they always doing the wrong thing? They're taking shortcuts in their job. They're lying to people. You know, they don't want to do a good job. You know, they only do a good job if the manager is watching them. You know, you'll see this kind of stuff probably in your life. And you have, they don't understand that God's watching everything. And when you live your life like that, while well, you understand God is watching everything, because you'll know that if you do it his way, then all, he'll bless all the work of your hand. And people will think, might even make fun of you. They might even say, oh, this person wants to do everything right because he's trying to you know, kiss manager's butt or whatever. No, it's because you literally want God's blessing. You're not even doing it for the manager. That, you know, when you really believe in God, <laughs> you're going to do the right thing when nobody is looking, right? When nobody knows, and you have, you might even have an opportunity to do the wrong thing because no one's looking. If you decide to do what is righteous and good and good in God's sight, like having integrity and being honest, right? Then God will promote you above all the other people that are trying to screw people over thinking that they're going to get ahead by lying. He don't, he'll promote you above all those people. And so that's why we do things as unto the Lord and not unto man. We're not trying to get the manager to be impressed with us or anything. We're trying to do things to have God be happy with us and be pleased with us and be like, yes, this is my son. You know, this is my son, Josiah. This is my son, Hansel. You know, this is my daughter, Tony. He, he wants to bless you because you're following his ways. And so he rewards that. You know, in Hebrews eleven six it says, um, let's go there. Without faith it's impossible to please God, but anyone who comes to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So one of the things that will help you to fall in love with God is know that when you follow him, He's going to reward you. There's a, there's a clear like reward I was just sharing with you. Those are rewards that will help you to fall in love with God. right? So, for example, there are people, there are Christians that don't know what I'm just teaching you in this, in this uh, service today. This, so that's why there's some Christians that have a hard time falling in love with God. I believe it's because they don't realize how much God wants to bless them. right? For example... There's some Christians that think that God can make people sick to teach them a lesson or that um, God wants to do those kinds of things, right? Or that God wants to make you poor to teach you a lesson. Those things are not biblically accurate. That's not in the Bible, okay? I just showed you the opposite of that. Uh, and when it comes to your finances, God wants to prosper you, okay? Um, he's not trying to destroy you. He's actually trying to tell you if you don't follow my ways, then all these problems happen. But it's because going against God means that you're obeying the devil. And the devil's the one that comes to steal, kill, destroy, make you poor. You know, And, and poverty is not, is not a blessing. It's a curse. And so Jesus Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. So that you have God's grace... To become rich, for example, okay, and we can easily see that in, in, you know if you look at poor countries, like really poor countries, these kids are like 
starving and you can see their bones, you know, through their skin. That's not a blessing to be that poor. It's not a blessing. God wants you to take you to another level, okay? And he also doesn't want you to just scrape by in your life, just being able to just be able to meet, meet your needs barely. No, he, he wants to take you above all the nations of the earth, right? He wants to be, make you the person that's able to uh, pay off a loan on a house, right? To, to be able to buy, a, uh, build a church building, for example, to help people come to Christ and, and to serve God and, and, and make many churches exist and pop up, right? To go against the work of the devil that wants to kill people. So, you know, that's the type of, I, I want you to receive that as your, as like a vision for what God can do through you. That you have this, God has given an amazing blessing through his word that if you hold on to what he says, he will take you there if you believe it, right? So Romans chapter 5, verse 2, it says this, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, um, Oh, wrong verse. Verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the in hope of the glory of God. So that's, that's how you can receive God's blessing is by believing. Believing. Um then you can access the grace, right? The grace is divine empowerment from God. He gives you the power to get wealth, the Bible says. He gives you the power to overcome sin, right? The sin shall not have dominion over you. You're not the one that's under the bondage of the devil or um, sickness or anything like that. You have the power over that because of Jesus, and that's what grace is. That's part of what grace is. Um, and so with faith, we access that power. We access grace through faith just by believing, right? Which is, it's so much easier <laughs> than, than what the devil wants to do, right? There's people like witches and people like that that try to get power through a satanic force they have to do weird rituals with, you know, <laughs> who knows what, rabbit's feet and blood, animal blood and all this weird crap. Why do that when you can simply receive the superior blood of Jesus by simply believing in him? Believing. God made it easy. It's easy. You simply believe in Jesus and what he did for you, that he died for your sins. He rose from the dead that you can have eternal life with Christ. And then the power of the devil has no power over you. Because in Colossians 1.13, it says that God has delivered us from the power of darkness and, and conveyed us into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus. So when you're in the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus, then you have the authority over the devil. You have authority over demons. You have the authority to cast out demons. You know, Jesus said, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That's Luke chapter 10, verse 19. So that's why a Christian has the power to cast out a demon out of someone. Is because the devil no longer has a power, has power over our lives. We have power over the devil because Jesus defeated him when he died for us on the cross paid for our sins because sin is the ticket that allows the devil to control your life and so Jesus paid the price for you to be free from that ticket that debt okay uh, so that's why it's so important for you to avoid sin don't sin if if you find yourself doing something wrong stop repent the blood of Jesus takes care of that you're not going to be condemned if you repent and just keep following Christ okay uh, the people that get in trouble are the ones that sin, that do wrong things, and they don't stop. They just don't stop. They don't repent. Okay, then, then the devil has the right into their life. Boom. And then they get screwed. Um, you know, and so you want to protect your heart, protect your soul, protect, you know, what you listen to, the music you listen to, the people you listen to. You know, as a pastor, I actually protect myself by listening to um 
preachers, you know, a lot of good music that worships God, you know, and you, you, to follow Christ, you have to make some sacrifices because, um, I'm not saying that, you know, I mean, I sometimes I watch political stuff that's not necessarily like <laughs> great, you know, cause, but, but like, I'm saying you don't want to get into a habit where you're, the main things that you're listening to are evil, right? Like bad music that promotes drugs and, and, you know, sexual immoralities or, um, watching movies that promote sin, you know, that type of thing, or shows that promote you disobeying God. Um, so if you avoid certain things and you make that sacrifice, then there's power in that sacrifice. The same way God, Jesus, there's a lot of power through Christ because he sacrificed himself for you. The same way you make sacrifices for Jesus and then you can reap the fruit of that, Right? Because unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it will abide alone. But when you plant the seed of your sacrifice of like, you know what, I don't care what anyone says, I'm going to do what God says. Uh, even if people make fun of me for it or you know criticize me for it, you're going to reap the benefits of God's blessing, which are always going to be the same no matter what generation you're from, what year you were born it's worked for people thousands, you know, thousands of years ago, and it'll still work in 2024, because God isn't a fad. God is eternal, and His word is always true. Praise God. So, Amen. you're going to, you're the, the people that God wants to use in this, and God's looking to and fro throughout all the earth mm -hmm. to see whose heart is loyal to Him, and then because He wants to show Himself strong on your behalf. When you say, you know what, Lord. I want to do it your way because your way is the best way. God will will strengthen you. He will promote you. He will make you uh, favored and blessed above everyone else. Praise God. Do you want do you want big blessings in your life? Okay, okay. Well, I pray right now a blessing over you in the mighty name of Jesus that you will receive increase in your finances, increase in your families. Uh, the health of your body, your relationships will be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. And that I, de I declare any evil thing that wants to come to take those things away from you, I cut it off now. I pray a special prayer cover over all four of you in Jesus' mighty name. That any evil thing will not be able to touch you as you follow Christ. That you will be protected from evil and God will preserve you for his heavenly kingdom when he comes back soon. So in Jesus name be blessed. And have a wonderful life. Bearing fruit for Jesus. So I want to give you the opportunity. That um, you know. That if you've never received Jesus. Or you once gave your life to Jesus. But I want to ask you this. If you died right now. Do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt. You would make it to heaven. And if you don't know for sure. This is the time to make it right. Or, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna pray with you. You'll be 100%. You will know when you leave here that, you know, you're right with God. You're at peace with God, right? So if there's anything that, any kind of sin that is trying to hold on to you so that you don't give your whole life to Jesus, it's time to let that go. And this is a safe place for you to receive the power of God into your life, okay? Um if you're if you feel God pulling on you, I want you to really think about this deeply. And no one's going to put you to shame if you want to rededicate your life or give your life to Jesus. We're going to celebrate, and angels are going to celebrate with you. So, if anyone feels that way, I want you to um, I want you to come up to the front. If anyone wants to make sure they're right with God, I want you to come to the front. We're going to I'm going to pray with you. Does anyone feel like that? And I want to feel a pull to make sure, okay, I need to know for sure I'm going to heaven. Do you know for sure you're going to heaven? Everyone good? Y'all know? Okay. Y'all believe it? Okay. Praise God. Okay. So in Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Father, for these wonderful young people that are here.